Well, we're going to get started then, okay? And we are going to take, yeah, can you have a seat, please? We're going to take a break from the Ten Commandments today just to give us an extra week to work on letting our brains let it go a little bit to see how much sticks. And then I want you guys to remind me, next week we might go through it again and we might be doing some prizes every time you can remember one of those, okay? That's okay. We're going to see we're going to see how we're going to do it. So, what we're going to do though is we are going to do our offering song. We're going to start with that, okay? So, if you have offering, you can go ahead and put it in the plate here. And we'll then we'll just wait for mama to get back. And the song that we are going to sing today for the offering is Deep and Wide. How many of you are familiar with the song Deep and Wide? It's really simple. It goes like this, okay? You use your hands. So what does deep mean? If something's really deep, like is, it, is it shallow? No. No, if it's deep, it's going to be deep, right? Yeah. And how about wide? Is wide really narrow? No. Or is wide really wide? No. Yeah, wide no. wide. So the lyrics are really simple. We're just going to go deep and wide. Deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide and we just keep on going deep and wide deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide and then we're going to start taking words out so then it's going to be going like hmm and wide hmm and wide there's a fountain flowing hmm and wide and then we keep on going until the whole song ends up being hmm and hmm okay all right so stand up while we do this that's totally fine. All right? Deep and wide. You guys ready? I'll go slower so that you can pick up with this line and stand up, okay? You can do this, bud. Here we go. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, what words should we get rid of first? Lana, I'll let you pick. Just pick one. What are we saying? Deep, wide, flowing. Fountain. And? You want a fountain? Okay, we're going to go for fountain. Ready? Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a mm -hmm, flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain. Oh, mm, flowing, flowing deep, deep and wide. wide. See, I did, I did it wrong. Oh, silly, you got me, Lana. All right, Anna, what one do you want to do? What word should we get rid of? Wide. Wide? Okay. Okay. We're going to keep doing it a little faster, yep. Maybe I wasn't listening to the instructions very well, but we are doing <clears throat> for wide and fountain Yes. Now? Okay. Yes. Okay. Deep and hmm, deep and hmm, there's a hmm, flowing. Deep and hmm, deep and hmm, there's a hmm, flowing deep and hmm. Okay, for daddy's sake, we're going to go deep, because I <laughs> usually start with that and throw me off. All right? Even fast this time. Hmm and hmm, hmm and hmm, there's a hmm, hmm, flowing hmm and hmm. Hmm and hmm, hmm and hmm, there's a hmm, hmm, flowing hmm and hmm, flowing. Hmm and hmm, hmm and hmm, there's a hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm and hmm, hmm and hmm, there's a hmm, hmm, flowing hmm. I think if I were to do even the and, I'd still get it messed up and still go hmm. Yeah, good job. So, we are starting, as you remember, a, actually, you might not remember, we're starting a new unit today, okay? So that means we've got a new memory verse and a new big question that we're going to be working on, all right? So here is our memory verse. Since it's new, we're not going to be doing any of, like, those kind of games that we typically do, but we're going to still try to have some fun, okay? So Isaiah 42.8 I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols, okay? Very important verse to remember who God is. And as we're thinking about that, who alone deserves God's praise? Zeke. God and I, I am is another thing of God. Yeah, that, that goes back to what he said his name was. I am who I am, which is really good. 
So in Isaiah 48, the Lord is saying, I am the Lord, and I, that is my name. So he's going back to that. And I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols. And you know what? This is really important because we as his creation so often give his glory to other things, don't we? How many of us would raise their hand and say, like, I genuinely live like God is the bestest thing ever? You know, I can't say that. Because what that would look like is if I woke up in the morning, do you know what I'd be really excited to do? Spend time with Jesus. But sometimes I don't because I get really tired or else I just have other things in my day going on. Or sometimes my time with Jesus is like, okay, Jesus, you got five minutes, then I'm going on to my other thing. And if Jesus is like the best thing about life, wouldn't we want to spend a lot of time with him? I have an hour. Okay, an hour is awesome. So, but that's something that we do. And, you know, there's so many other things that we like to give God's glory and his praise to. And we don't sometimes see them as idols because they're not like something carved or like gold statue or something. But they can still be idols in our lives. So this is a really important verse. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to first say this out loud together. And then we're going to keep saying it out loud. But each time we say it out loud, we're going to be doing something different each and every time, okay? So I'm going to be asking that you watch me and then you do what I do, but we'll do it for the whole verse, okay? Okay, so first time through, Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols. Okay? Now we're going to go like this. Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols. Okay, now we're gonna stand up and we're gonna shout like it's true. Isaiah 42 verse eight. I am the Lord, that is my name. And I will not give my glory to another, nor Let's do something kind of silly here. Let's do it like we're underwater. So you gotta put your finger over your lips. So it sounds kind of like the bubbles are coming out of your lips when you're underwater, okay? Isaiah 42, 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols, okay? One more. What's another silly thing we can do? Anna? Try to bounce on one yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Try to bounce on one four, okay? Except if you're wearing heels, you can take your heels off. Yep. <laughs> I'm not doing it though. I want to try to bounce. Isaiah 42 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to idols. Good job. All right. So our big question for this week then is this. How many gods are there? One. Uno. Three. An uno. <laughs> there's an uno. There's one in Spanish. Yep. And are you taking a Spanish class now? Actually, I already used to, but then we stopped. Okay. Because you were breaking out a lot of Spanish last night. So you guys said one. Let's see if you're right. Yes, there is one true God. And we want to say that one true God because are there a lot of fake gods? Yeah. There are, aren't they? So there is one true God, and this is really important. He alone, who alone, deserves worship. Okay? So that means he deserves your heart. He deserves my heart. He deserves all of who we are because he created you, and he loves you, and he sent Jesus to die for you. Sometimes we don't really believe that, but that's what he did, okay? All right, so, time to guess the story. Guess the story! Guess the story. Now, this one's gonna be a little tricky one. We're gonna see if you guys can figure it out, okay? So we're gonna do a guess the story using some objects again. Okay, so let me reach under here to see what I've got. Oh, 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 there it goes, there it goes. There it goes. Ah, 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 ah. It's kind of moving around on me. Oh, first one. What's this? Olive oil. It's olive oil. 
This is a delicious drink. I'm just kidding, don't drink this. That would mess you up maybe a little bit, so don't drink that. But what do I use olive oil for? For cooking. Yeah, what would you cook with it? Supper. Supper, sure. Pizza dough. Sometimes we use this on like a pan, as we're gonna, if we're gonna fry something, like eggs. Sometimes we use this in an ingredient, as an ingredient, right? Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, we've got that, and let's see what we got here. Okay, whoa, what is this? Flour. Flour. Are you sure it's not cornstarch? Flour. Flour. Are you sure? Flour. Yeah. Cornstarch is white. Cornstarch is white too. What if it's baking soda? It's white because I saw you at Cat Hall. I saw you with the flour and the I did bring the flour container from home, but did I also bring the baking soda bag yesterday? So what do you think this is? Baking soda. Is this the container I brought the flour in? Flour and baking soda. Oh, no. You were right. It is flour. I just had to give you a hard time because you did give an advantage of seeing me bring So this is flour. So flour and oil. Okay. Now, is this a lot of flour? No. No? Is this a lot of oil? No. No. You know, this might be one-fifth of what I would need to make the pancakes that I made this morning. So you're not gonna get a whole lot out of this, are you? Let's see one thing else that we've got. We've got some of these things. Mmm. Sticks that I got Okay, and we got some sticks. I got them from You did, you did, thank you. So we have some sticks, we have some oil, and we have some flour. Can you guess the story? I can. Rhea, what is the story that you're going to guess? They poured, they drank, they the olive oil, and then, and, or maybe poured it in, in the flour, and then stirred it around with a stick. Okay, <laughs> that is a very good guess. It's not quite the story that we're going to be talking about this morning, though, okay? I know Zeke's gonna like bust out of his skin if I don't call him, so I'm gonna ask if there's anybody else who is a guest first. Okay? Uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. What's your guess, Jared? I think they don't call him the oil <laughs> and then Does that sound like a story from our Bible? And then mm -hmm. get it out of the family. Oh, That sounds really close to what Rhea was saying. All right, Zeke, what do you think? The woman who was gathering sticks and Elijah came up to her and her flour and oil never ran out. Oh, we'll have to see. That sounds like flour and oil and sticks. It might be a strong possibility, huh? Well, let's see. All right. Actually, I'm just going to say, Zeke, you were right. Good job. Good job. Okay. So... While we do this, we, we need to realize where we came from, right? Because this is a really important background for this story. So, if you remember, last week, what did we talk about? Does anybody remember? Uh, yeah. What did we talk about? Um, we talked about Jesus. We need to talk to him. We, yeah, we do need to talk to Jesus, right? Remember, we talked about Jerry and Ray. And what were Jerry and Ray? They were kings of what places? Uh, 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 um, Israel. Kings. Yeah. Kings. You did a good job repeating what Mama told you. And they're partly right. They were king. One was a king of Israel. Where was the other king of? Judah. Judah. That's right. So what happened was Solomon was no longer king, and the kingdom that he had ripped into two. Right. Right, Landon? Yeah, okay. So the kingdom of God ripped into two. And so now there's the northern kingdom that had ten tribes. 
and a bad king who said, I don't want you going south to Jerusalem where the temple is and worshiping God because then you might like that king better. So I'm going to make these calves for you to worship and say, this is your God, which seems really kind of silly. With Aaron and the Ten Commandments? Yeah, it is a very similar to that. And so that was a bad thing. And then we see the king below, who was Jeroboam, and he, all, no, Rehoboam, that was also really bad because his heart was really hard against his people. And so we have the kingdom divided. And God has given Judah one or two, like he is very few in the course of his history, and we'll maybe cover this a little bit more, good kings, spiritually. There was a couple of kings that might have done okay for the nation, but spiritually, mostly bad, leading their people to worship idols and to do bad things. Israel had an awesome track record. They had, guess how many good kings they had spiritually? The northern kingdom. Fourth, that is a good guess. But they had zero. In the entire history of the northern country of Israel, there was not a good, spiritually good king. They always were leading their people astray. And so as they're worshiping, now here's, here's the deal. Here's just how bad this was. There was a king, okay? And his name was Ahab. Now here's what Ahab did. Now how many of you, okay, how many of you are the oldest in your family? Okay, so we got two oldest, all right? Ahab, what he did was he married this girl, her name was Jezebel, and he wanted to make a temple and a, a place to worship her gods. And so to start things out, here's what he did. He took his child, come on up here child, and he took his knife and he said, for the glory of this God, and he killed his son. I don't know if exactly it was a knife or not. He could have burned him alive or something like that. But he killed his own son to worship this false god. And do you know what else happened? How many of you are the youngest in your family? Okay, so we've got Zeke and we've got um, Lan and they're dead. Okay, because they got sacrificed for the start. All right? Rhea, you're, you're not quite the youngest. We can pick on Jaira because our youngest isn't going to be able to. Okay, so Anna and Jaira. Now, Anna and Jaira, once the building of the temple is complete, guess who gets sacrificed? It's your turn. You're going to get burned for the sake of this false okay. god. No. Okay, good. Now, I want to ask, does that sound... Does that sound like a bad thing that a king who is supposed to follow God would do? Yeah. It is. It's so horrible. And that's the status of the nation when God sent his prophet Elijah to go. Okay? So this is pretty bad. So here's what God does in response. And I'm going to read from 1 Kings chapter 17. And I'm going to read just the first six verses, okay? And then this happened. Elijah, the Tishbite, from among the settlers of Gilead, confronted Ahab. So he goes before the king. And he says this, As surely as God lives, the God of Israel, before whom I stand in obedient service, the next year's are going to see a total drought. Okay, so first of all, who is he talking about here? Who is the God that, he, that Elijah is mentioning? Kaya? The true God, right? God the Father, the Lord, who said, Behold, I am the Lord, that is my name, and I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor my praise to idols, right? So God sends Elijah and he says, look, God who sent me, he is going to declare that there is going to be a total drought. Not even just a drought. Do you guys know what a drought is? What's a drought, Landon? It, everything dries up. Yeah, there's no rain. And for our area, we'd probably say there's no snow too. Because sometimes we not get rain, but we get a lot of snow. So there's no rain or no snow. Now, a drought is where we might get very, very little rain. Okay? Like... We, our, our trees are so dry, like you light a match in the forest and it's just gonna whoosh, go up like that. Like that's how dry it is. And we might be like, we need rain, we need rain. And we wake up in the morning and there's like the sprinkle. And it lasts for maybe 10 minutes. It's enough just to get things a little damp. Now is that gonna fix the problem of the dry forest? Nope. No, it's still dangerous, right? But that's not a total drought because there was some moisture. 
But a total drought is there's nothing. And how long did he say it was going to last? A couple of years. For a few years, yeah. Not a drop of dew or rain unless I say otherwise. Now, could you imagine being that guy? Say, okay, I'm not going to let it rain until I say so. How many of you would do that? Okay, Landon's giving me his face, kind of like, that's crazy. Because, like, we don't, we're, we can't control that, can we? But Elijah was speaking, Elijah was speaking for who? God. So can God do that? God can. And remember, if, what we remember is in Isaiah, what we're working on, if God will not share his praise with another, what do you think would happen if his chosen people start to worship other gods? Do you think he might act and punish them a little bit? And that's what we see here, okay? So God then told Elijah, <clears throat> get out of here and fast. Head east and hide out at the Kirith Ravine on the other side of the Jordan River. You can drink fresh water from the book, and I've ordered the ravens to feed you, okay? So, yeah. So God says, you need to get out of there. You need to scoop. Because if you're telling this king, there's not going to be any rain until I say so, and then there doesn't come any rain. What do you think the king might try to do to you? Kill him. I don't know if the king, king would try to kill you because then if you can't say, let there be rain again, but the king contorts you to try to get you to say, let there be rain, right? So God was protecting Elijah here by saying, get out of here. And he brings him to this place where there's water, right? There's a little brook. And how is he going to get fed? By the ravens. Ravens are kind of like blackbirds, a little bit like crows. So let me ask you guys, what is the weirdest thing that you've eaten? Zucchini noodles. Zucchini noodles. All right, that is kind of weird. Okay, zucchini noodles. All right, Kai, what was the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? You thought zucchini bites were weird? Those are really good, though. Okay, Landon, what about you? Strangest thing you've ever eaten? Frog legs. Frog legs. Were they good? And it did taste like chicken, okay. That's what my brother said about those two. I would say for me, like we talked about last week in our Guess the uh, Consequence game, maybe it would be eating that mango Skittle out of the toilet. That, that might be the weirdest thing that I ate, okay? But how many of you would eat something, like eating food can be weird enough, even if you know where it comes from, right? But how many of you would be sitting down on your deck and a crow comes and it brings you like... A carrot. Would you be like, oh, what a tasty treat for me. You would eat it, huh? Zeke's saying no. I think Sarah's saying she wouldn't touch it. What if it was, okay, here's another thing. How many of you, have any of you ever tried something called tiger meat? Yeah. It's not actually made from tigers, okay? So if, you're, if you like tigers, don't worry. It's a raw hamburger that you're supposed to eat while it's raw. It's seasoned. And so it's seasoned, yeah. And so some people didn't like it, but I tried it, all right? But we, that's enough that people are like, I am not going to touch it. So with meat especially, we're like, okay, I need to know it's cooked. I need to know it comes from a good animal. I like so if a crow that. came and it was bringing you some meat, how many of you would eat that? I would. Okay. I feel like I would think it came off the side of a road because I, I know we're talking <laughs> ravens here, but I feel like crows are always picking the dead stuff on the side of the road. Sure, sure. So that's pretty crazy. And God then does this. He gives Elijah this, fo this food from these birds and he feeds him. He takes care of him, all right? Um, which is pretty crazy to think of. Now, as we're thinking about this, I have this little activity because I think sometimes we can think about famines and we can think about droughts and we can kind of have these things go through our minds, but we don't really understand what it means. So I came up with this little activity that we're going to do. So I've got these balls back again, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump some of these balls out and I want you to collect them, okay? Now, I'm not going to say how many you need to collect, but I'm just going to say they should all be picked up, okay? Yeah, you could do that, all right? So here we go. Here are some balls, all right? Okay, there's some balls going. All right, there's some balls. Go ahead and collect some. Nope, don't throw them. You want to hang on to them. 
So you're not wanting them in the basket. They need to. Right. You want. You are holding on to the balls. Everyone's holding on to your balls. Okay. So I need you guys to kind of line up right here. All right. All right. So here's what these balls are. These balls. Every day you guys need to eat, don't you? See, you're dropping your food all over the floor. <laughs> so this ball represents one day's worth of food. Okay. Yep. So it's the first day. If you're going to eat some food, put one of your balls in here. Okay, just one if you're going to eat some food. Zeke is deciding not to eat at all this first day. Okay? Oh, he is. All right. Len is not going to eat. He's going to be going hungry. All right. Now it's the second day. So put some food in here if you're going to eat on the second day. Okay? So Rhea's like, hey, and Jared, you both want to eat some food? Yeah, I, you know. When a day comes, I am ready to eat some food. Okay, Zeke, you're not going to eat today? Oh, you are going to eat. I just have to ask you a question. Are you going to eat twice today? Just once. Okay. All right. And then guess what happens? Yay, it rains. Okay. So that's good. All right. So it rained. All right. So who's going to eat food this next day? All right. All right. Zeke, you're not going to eat? Okay. All right. Oh, Zeke ate again. All right. And then it rains again. All right. Okay, and so then it's another day. Who's gonna eat today? Oh, Kai ate a lot. Oh, Kai ate again. All right. Okay, and then it's the next day. Who's gonna now? Who who's starting off this next day without any food? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. So we've got. Raise your hand if you don't have any food right now. Okay. The girls. <laughs> all the girls. All the girls were picking out. Okay. Now it's the next day. You girls, here's your choice. You can ask someone to give you some food. You can maybe pay them. You have to figure out like, hey, I'll do this for you if you give me some food. Otherwise, you don't get to eat. Okay. So it's the next day. Who's going to eat some food? Okay. So you're gonna have to ask somebody for some food since you don't have any. Okay, Landon. <laughs> Lan is just like, forget this. I am eating everything. Eat this. Ah. I haven't eaten in two days. Okay, yeah, so he's hungry. He hasn't eaten in two days. All right? Zeke, what you going to do? I ate already. So Zeke ate already. All right, now it's another day. Now Zeke is the only one who's got food left. So what are you guys going to do? Most of you haven't eaten yet for the whole day. Okay? I will do all of his chores. So Zeke is going to eat one. Okay, Zeke, you're going to share your last one. Oh, so he gave some to Jaira. Okay. Jaira gonna eat it? Okay, are you gonna eat today, Jaira? If you're gonna eat, put it in the basket. Alright, and guess what happens? Now there's a little sprinkle. Okay. So who's now who who has who has not put in a ball in for two days? I haven't. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. If you haven't put it oh hold on Ray, you just put that in. I'm not asking for that yet. If you haven't put a ball in for two days, I want you to get take a step back. One big step back, okay? Jerry, you can go by, by Kai, okay? Because what happens is, if you haven't eaten in a while, you start getting weaker. So you're not able to get the food that might come because of the rain. Now, who's gonna eat today? Okay, all right? So that was one day. You don't have anything to eat. So I want, yeah, Ray, you'd be up close here. Um, Kai and Jair, you're going to take one more step backwards. Okay? And Anna, one more step backwards. Okay? You can, you can go a day without eating. You're going to be hungry, but if you go a couple days, you're going to start really feeling weak and stuff. All right? So who's going to eat this ne next day? Okay, Lana's going to say, so everyone take a step back. Okay? Who's going to eat this next day? Okay, Lana's going to come, so Lana can step forward because you got your energy. Everyone else take a step back. You can come, come towards me, Zeke. Okay. And now, it rains again. It rains. Oh, you're back there, Zeke. All right. Okay. So, who's going to eat some more? Okay. Okay. Zeke. Then Lana, take a step back. Okay, Zeke, you can stay there. Everyone else, take another step back. All right. So, new day. Who's going to eat today? I got to I'm going to Okay. Lana's going to keep saving it. All right, nobody eat today. Everyone take a step back. New day. Who's going to take food today? Lana's going to take food. All right. So 
Another new day. Okay, take a step back, everyone. Another new day. It's take another step back. Don't worry. Anna, you're going to have to start working down the side. Okay? And then it goes like this. Another new day. Another new day. Another new day. Girls, you guys are starting to die. No! Because you haven't had enough food. So, you guys can go ahead and have your seats now, okay? So, what that was to show is that in a total drought, first of all, you don't necessarily know that a total drought's coming. So you have to figure out how to use your resources well, right? So you could, if you had like, Landon, if you would have held on to your thing and not had that huge feast, you'd have been pretty well off, right? But then every time it rained, girls especially, you who are so far away, you wouldn't have been able to get here to get the balls. No. Because you were too weak to go out and collect the food. So this really adds up very quick. And soon, how long would it be before people start to pass away? From not having enough food. Or getting sick because you're not nourished enough. Okay? And so this is what's going on in the nation. And Elijah is meanwhile sitting over there on this mountain. And he's getting water from the brook. And he's having these birds bring him food. And how do you think the king feels? His whole country is not getting rain and not getting food. And do you think people are happy with him? Because what can he do about it? And that's not true. He, do you think God was hoping that he would repent of his sin? He was. But this king, Ahab, would not do it. And so he was mad at Elijah. Okay? But you know what happens when there's no rain? What happens to streams? They dry up. They dry up. And then no fish can swim and they'll die. Yeah. Yes. And these streams dry up. And that's what happened. And that's what happened to the stream that was running by where Elijah was. So Elijah now, the drought was so severe that his water source was now gone. And God had been providing for him. And now Elijah's wondering, okay, what's going to happen? So God comes to him and he does something again. Okay, that's going to show up here in the same chapter, verses 7 through 12. This is what God does. Eventually the brook dried up because of the drought. Then God spoke to him and said, Get up and go to Zarephath and Sidon and live there. I've instructed a woman who lives there, a widow, to feed you. Now this is really important. She's a widow, which means what? What is it to be a widow? She doesn't have any husband. She doesn't have a husband. Now, do you understand that in this time period, if you were a widow, you already were struggling really bad because it was the man who would go and would provide for you. So if you're a widow and you don't have anyone caring for you, you're kind of fending for yourself and it's really difficult. Okay? So God sends Elijah then to this widow, not just wealthy man or family, but to a widow. And so he goes there. And he gets up and he went to Zarephath. Now notice what it says in the verse before. God says, I've, sent, I've instructed a woman who lives there to feed you. So God is telling Elijah, she has like this command for me to feed you. So Elijah goes, and as he's there, he sees in Zarephath, he comes to the entrance of the village, he met a woman. She's gathering firewood and he asks her, please, would you give me a little water in a jug? I need a drink. And she went to get it. And he called out, and while you're at it, would you bring me something to eat? You know, just something small, nothing too big. And she says, I swear, surely as your God lives, I don't have so much as a biscuit. I have a handful of flour in a jar. Just a teeny bit of flour left. And I have just a little bit of oil in a bottle. You found me scratching together so I could get some sticks so I could build a fire and I could make the last food and then me and my son will die. Why would she say that? What were they going to do? And how would they die? They would starvation. Yeah, they were going to die from being starved. Now, do you think God made a mistake in sending Elijah to this person to be fed? Do you think Elijah's thinking that? I mean, think of it. You're Elijah, and Elijah's told by God, okay, go meet this woman. She's instructed by me to feed you. And Elijah asks this woman, and she's like, 
I've got enough to make like three pancakes and then we're done. And then my son and I plan on dying because we don't have anything left. Elijah said to her, don't worry about a thing. Go ahead and do what you've said. But first make a small biscuit for me and bring it back here. Then go ahead and make a meal from what's left for you and your own son. This is the word of the God of Israel. The jar of flour will not run out and the bottle of oil will not become empty before God sends rain on the land and ends this drought. Now think about this. You're that widow. You are going to prepare your last food that you have. Now, Lennon, when you were holding on to those balls and you realized, like, these balls are meals for me. This is food to eat. How eager were you to share those with other people? It'd be really hard, right? Especially if this person says, hey, trust me, you give me this one meal, it's just one, and then you're going to keep on getting new ones, right? When there's nothing else around. You're the only one that has stuff left. And they say, just trust me. Give me what you have, and then you'll get more. Would that be tough? Mm -hmm. That'd be really hard. Especially, this is a widow who already doesn't have anything, but she has a child that she cares for and is trying to provide for. And she's hearing this man say, if you just give it to me instead of your son, it was really tough for her. And he says, trust me. But what does she do? And she went right off and did it, just as Elijah asked. So she did it. She had to act on faith, believing what he said about God, that God would actually provide for her everything that she needed, that this little jar of, this little jar of flour would continue to be there, and this little jar of oil would never run out. And she found out that the jar of meal didn't run out and the bottle of oil didn't become empty and God's promise was fulfilled to the letter exactly as Elijah had delivered it. So, this is pretty crazy. How did this happen? How could this much flour last day after day after day, providing enough for her and her family to eat day after day after day without adding anything to it? How was it done? We call this something, it's a special M word. Miracle. It was a miracle. God was doing something supernatural to continue to provide for this woman because she acted on faith. And she continued to provide for Elijah. And how do you think this would be for her neighbors? To see this widow who didn't have anything, but day after day, she continues to be able to be fed. She continues to be able to be strong because she is being nourished during this time when nobody else has anything. What do you think she might say when her neighbor said, where are you getting this food from? Zeke, what would you say? I, I don't know. You don't know? I think I would give glory to God. Yeah. I mean, she couldn't say, well, I just found this, like, secret stash of flour, and I've just been going there, because it didn't exist. She would only be able to say, God himself is providing me with what I need. And so, like we said in our memory verse, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to others, nor my praise to idols. God is doing this so that people would see how great and how awesome he is. Okay? So how long did this last? How long was she able to have flour and oil? Who cut that? Landon? Forever. Not quite forever. They said that there's. Until the drought ended. Yes, Go until ahead. the drought ended. God was going to supply her needs for the needed time that she had. Not more, but enough to get her through until the drought ended. And we don't know how long that was. We don't have a specific period of time. But that was amazing. God provided for her for this whole thing. And I think, too, again, how this impacted her neighbors. Now, for you, let's say that you were in this drought situation, okay? What kind of an impact would it have on you knowing that you didn't have to worry for the rest of this really hard time what you'd have to eat? Do you think that'd make a big impact? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be huge. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know what? I think a lot of people are doing that, but then it, gets, it got to a point where everybody didn't have anything. So there was nothing to be found. There was no one to go to. But this widow continued having food, and she knew that it was going to come as long as she needed it, which was amazing. So she was able to have her faith grow. She saw God provide day after day. And who do you think she was trusting in? Herself? She's like, I sure know how to stretch this flower out. No, she trusted in God. Okay? And God shows his goodness in this by caring for someone that the world would typically not care too much about and using that unlikely person to supply Elijah's needs and to bring himself glory. Rhea, do you have a question? Okay, so I have a question. This is all neat and stuff. We're talking about God and this wood in the Old Testament. What does this do to point us to Jesus? Well, you know what? He gives us a promise in his word that when we call us, or when we call out to Jesus, he will provide our needs. So think about that. This was a really big comfort for this widow. It can be a comfort for you too. God, Jesus Christ, wants to provide your needs. Now what's our biggest need? What do you think? Biggest need that each one of us have. Okay, why? What's the biggest problem that we have? <laughs> our biggest need is Jesus' death because we need to be forgiven our sin. Now, we could live our whole life here on earth really comfortably, and we could believe that everything is going great, but if we haven't had our sin taken care of through Jesus' blood on the cross, what is the future for us? Eternal death, right? Hell, really bad. So our biggest need isn't to be fed physical food. Our biggest need is to have our sins forgiven. And Jesus loves to meet that physical need, spiritual need, every day for us, to forgive us. But Jesus also cares about our physical needs. He talks about that in his word. He says, don't worry about the, tomorrow, what you're going to eat. He said, look at the field and look at the things all around you. These animals, they don't have to worry, and I care about them. How much more do I care about you, right? Then we also see another lesson about Jesus is that God cares about even the most insignificant people, especially those who are abandoned. You know, the widow, she had no one to turn to, no one for support, but yet God noticed her and cared for her. And you know what, guys? There might be times when you feel in your life, nobody sees me, nobody understands what I'm going through, nobody cares, I am all alone, even though I'm surrounded by people, I might have a house full of siblings and parents, but I feel so alone. And if you feel that way, guess what? God sees you. Jesus knows you. And Jesus loves you as you are. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't, we don't grow and be changed to be more like him. But we know that we don't have to be something that we're not. Just as we are, Jesus loves us. And he wants to change us. And he wants to meet our life. Okay? So, as we go today and kind of end our lesson time for this morning, I want you to be thinking about this amazing story. About how God provides. About how God is also working for his glory in the midst of a country where his glory wasn't present. And how much God cares about his name. Because all this started again, right? Because the king did what? what did the king? Yeah, the king was worshiping idols and making the whole nation worship other gods. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity and for the story that we have um, of Elijah and this widow. And you having the power to stop the clouds from sending rain. Um, how you have the power to create out of nothing and how to sustain this woman and her child and Elijah through uh, this miracle of the flour and the oil and it not running out and how that was a public testimony to the neighbors about your goodness. And God, we pray that we would be willing vessels to show your goodness to the people in our lives, God. That we wouldn't be shy about talking about the truth of what you've done and recognizing to Jesus our greatest need is for forgiveness and that you have given that to us beyond what we could ever possibly need because you're so generous and so powerful. And God, that you desire to give that gift of forgiveness 
to our friends, to our neighbors, to our families, and that we might be the messenger who brings that good news to them. Help us to have a burden for these people, to be sharing the truth. And God, we pray that you would change us, supply us with what we truly need. God, help us to know that you see us. And Lord, may we live our lives, not for our glory, not for the glory of something else, but for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we will see you guys next week.